there's an energy there of like-minded people all uplifted, all feeling the same way. Yes, you can watch it at home on TV, but you could also go to the stadium and be in that energy, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, you can, you don't catch quite the same buzz at home. So if you're if you're lost at home, <laughs> let me just say <laughs> that Peter's films are a really fantastic introduction to some of the concepts that we're talking about because what's happening is he's interviewing people who have had experiences of connecting with a consciousness that is beyond any of our individual personalities and yet which every one of us has access to. So it's a great way to dip into some of this material. So why don't we just tell people real quickly, what are the three films that you have out right now that are in this genre? Well, the order that they were released is actually not the order that they were shot in. So I'll go with the order they were shot in. The first person I interviewed was Lee Carroll, and he channels Cryon. And it's always interesting how the personality of the channeler, there's a mix there. For example, Lee is an engineer. He's very technical. And Cryon is, my little tagline for Cryon is, the way things work. Uh -huh. He's into explaining things like DNA and these kind of, let's just call them more scientific things. He always has, a, to me, a larger portion of men in his audience than in the typical metaphysical thing because men are kind of lagging a little bit, let's just say. But there's a lot of men come to his. And then after him was Neil Donald Walsh with Conversations with God, with these books that he had written. And the reason those really appealed to me is I had a uh, sort of a Catholic upbringing, and I think Neil did as well. And he's asking questions that I asked, we all asked of all the priests and whoever around us. And Yeah, but we got in trouble called. for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I found either that I didn't get a real, you know, oh, that's God's will, or as they were explaining something in my head, I was saying, yeah, you don't know either, do you? With Neil, the answers were just, they were just right on the money. They really resonated with me. And then after that was Jerry and Esther Hicks with Abraham. And I've done these DVDs in such a way, because there's a lot of people that are into this stuff, but, and they'd like to tell some of their friends or their spouse about it, and it's kind of tricky. These are designed that you can literally hand this to someone and say, hey, have a look at this. With, you don't have to set them up at all. It, it starts right at the beginning and does not assume anything, does not assume you know anything about anything metaphysical, but gives you a full introduction to these people where you can, well, make your own decisions. We were talking just before we went on the air about interviewing and my style of interviewing, and I'm asking people to explain themselves, not defend themselves. Mm, well, that's and that's a critical difference because typically in Western media, there's this almost attack sort of mentality when people are being interviewed, uh, an inherent deep skepticism for anything that isn't mainstream. I appreciated that in watching these films, and I love that you said that, that you don't need to have any setup if you're going to pass this on to a friend or a loved one, because I get that question all the time. You wouldn't believe how many people on my teleseminars or email me that say, my spouse, usually it's my husband you know, or my boyfriend, and I want to talk in a minute about that whole gender difference thing especially since you're a man. I'd like to hear your opinion on that. But my spouse, my boyfriend, my mom, my daughter, my you know son, whatever, they don't get the stuff that I'm into. What do I do? And so from now on, Peter, I'm just going to say, just go get this movie <laughs> and just <laughs> hand it to them. And then you don't need to say anything or get in the middle of it. That would be an easy solution. So, it would be, but I, I'm sure you qualified by saying that the idea to never answer a question that isn't being asked. I mean, if they really do exactly. are interested in what you're into, but, but otherwise just giving them saying, you really need to watch this is not what I'm recommending. No, and I was being a little bit facetious. I'm glad that you said that because truly we each have our own path. And one of the great messages from all of the films that you've done is, is really to let people have their own way of being. And I remember Jerry Hicks saying in the Secret Behind the Secret film, you were asking him about what if people are scared of this channeling material. And one of the things he said was, well, if somebody's really scared, then I would say just to respect that. I would never push something on somebody. And I really appreciated his answer. There's just a respect there and a deep humility for each person's path. And that each one of us can just respect where everybody else is at. And it's really, you know, we all want that. 
it's true. And Esther herself was frightened by the material. Jerry had been very inquisitive all his life, and in this particular point, he had picked up the Seth material, and Seth was someone that was channeled by Jane Roberts in the mid-'70s, I believe. And Esther just found the whole thing spooky to the point that she told Jerry she didn't want the book in the bedroom. Now, that's pretty strong. And so Jerry just went along his merry way, didn't push it on her, but read it. And eventually, through a series of circumstances, Esther became interested, but no one convinced her. And, and in fact, convincing, it just doesn't work. And oh, it never that, works. Uh, yeah, I don't care if you're talking about politics or religion or, I mean, has have any of us ever truly convinced anyone else of anything? I certainly don't think know, I have, and I used to be a lawyer. <laughs> so. Right. Another Abraham that we know, Abraham Lincoln, I believe this quote is attributed to him, said, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. It's just, they've got to come to it themselves. I love that. And, and so there, let's get back into this whole gender thing then, because I, I, again, I hear from quite a few women, Peter, who are, they want their husbands to be on board with all of this. And I've heard Eckhart Tolle talk about that he has noticed a, a gender difference in the way people approach this kind of material and maybe even spirituality in general. So I'm curious, as a man and as somebody who has been exposed to a lot of this material, why do you think that is? I think there's a couple of reasons. I mean, I don't think at our core men and women are different. I think it's societal things that happen. And the simplest way of explaining it is I think, and again, this is very general and very broad, but I think women are just a little more open-hearted. They are encouraged to be men at an early age. We kind of have to get a little tougher for various reasons, and so it's a little harder to open up that way, is I guess the best way to explain it. Going back to the, you know, the wife that wants her husband or boyfriend to get into the material, just think of the flip side where your boyfriend's really into football and you couldn't care less. Do you think there's something he can come up with that's going to convince you to get into football? Like, I think you just live your life and if if you're really living it then you're going to become happier you're going to become more content you're going to have more fun you're going to have more abundance and that is when the other person goes what's going on here what's your secret what are you doing differently that's a whole different thing but trying to trying in any way to push something on someone that they don't want is just it's just going to backfire. Trust me, I've tried it a few times. Oh, I, I have too. I, I think I've finally given up. But it, so what I hear you saying is that your life becomes the message and that exactly. you really then may attract a shift from somebody who's interested. But I completely agree. I mean, my husband's into Formula One racing and I just can't even begin to tell you how much I don't care. You know, I don't get it. And that's fine. You know, he watches his thing and I, I do other stuff and he doesn't say, oh, you know, why aren't you sitting in here watching Formula One racing with me? Because he knows it's just not my thing. And it doesn't ever work when someone's coming at us with, you need to do this. You've got to change for me. Not effective. <laughs> and not or, pleasant. Or I've found the answer to it all. And, and really, it's only, it's your answer. That's why, for example, there's so many different channelers, too, and that some appeal, some people like some of them. It's just, it's, it's variety, right? I mean, variety is what it's all about. Right. Many paths up the same mountain, right? Exactly. Exactly. And so, Peter, being immersed in this material for so long, at the risk of telling people what to do, which we've just said we're never going to do, I wonder, though... <laughs> If you would give some advice to someone who is interested in having a life that's happier, that's more at ease, and just moving forward through life with, uh, with more grace and joy, 